Hello, everybody. My name is Shovik Nandi. I'm the Director of Technology for Johns Manville's Engineered Products Division. Today, I'm going to talk about durable non-wovens for building interiors. Before I go far into the presentation, I just wanted to briefly talk about what is a building interior? What am I talking about? So here you see a picture of the inside of an office. It can be either the inside of your office that you work in, the inside of your house, the inside of a school, a hospital building, a hotel. It can be a multitude of things. I'm just using a office as an example here. <clears throat> so where are non-wovens used inside a building? Here you can see the examples, a few of them. So a non-woven can be used as a facer for the ceiling tiles. It can be used in the flooring. It can be used in the office partitions for office interiors. Non-wovens can be used in the composites, in the furniture that we sit on or write on. Non-wovens are present in the interior walls as facers. They can also be present in HVAC systems that brings in the air into the building. So you can see a variety of examples where non-wovens are used today. But why are they used in the first place? What do non-wovens bring to these products? The primary contribution is mechanical performance. It brings in the resilience, the strength, the dimensional stability of the products, the durability of the product. You can see a few of these images here where I'm showing a variety of the interior of a building. For example, in the flooring, it can be a hard floor or a soft carpeted floor where a non-woven can provide dimensional stability. See, over time, as the room or the floor goes through different temperature cycles, weather cycles, the floors might tend to either expand or contract. If they're expanding, it can be swelling or buckling in the corners at the joints, or if they're contracting, it can leave gaps in between and they don't look good. They just look ugly. Nobody wants to look at these floors. That's where a non-woven can help provide that durability, that dimensional stability to the floor or, or any other application. Another example could be, say, the fire resistance. God forbid, if there is a fire in the building, you want time for the people to leave the building before the flame engulfs the building itself. So that's where a non-woven can provide that fire resistance, that time for people to leave. On the flip side, maybe say in a hospital, you want the surfaces to be clean, mold-free, mildew-free. A non-woven can provide that to a surface, uh, a resistance to that mold and mildew. Or for example, in an office building where there are people talking, phones ringing, there's a lot of noise that gets created inside the office space. But you want a quieter space there as well. So you create non-wovens that can absorb the sound through say furniture, the office panels, the ceiling tiles, all of them can be designed to absorb the noise and create a quieter space there. So you can see non-wovens can help with so many different aspects inside a building. What else? They can also contribute to a indoor air quality. As humans, we are spending a lot of time inside buildings, be it inside your house, in the offices, or kids going to school. We want the air quality to be healthy and comfortable. So as we are designing these non-wovens, we want these neuromaterials to be clean and not contributing to a poor air quality. If that happens, what happens? We will have a short-term effect and also a long-term effect. Short-term, 
you can have your eye or throat irritation watering of your eyes headaches it just creates a very bad working condition or very poor quality of life nobody likes that to be to be in a in, nobody wants to be present in such an environment and even worse are these long term effects you can have respiratory issues you can have heart issues if you are constantly present in a poor quality of air we don't want any of these so as you are designing your non woven you have to keep those in mind so how do you design the non woven the two primary aspects of it one is the fiber piece and then the other is the adhesive that glues all these fibers together so depending on what you want to do with the non woven if you are going for a high strength or a high durability you might want to choose a chopped fiber where um you can select from say a synthetic fiber a glass fiber a mineral fiber a natural fiber which has a length and a diameter aspect to it that creates certain strength characteristics or say your application you're looking for a high burst strength or a high tear strength you might choose a continuous fiber you have these never ending fibers that are laid down to create these non wovens which are great for tear resistance or say your application requires high strength in a particular direction say your machine runs extremely fast and you want strength in the machine direction you might add additional reinforcement there in the machine direction to provide that or say on the flip side your application might need high strength in the cross direction so you add reinforcement in your cross direction or any any direction per se that you might require additional strength you you add reinforcement there to provide that strength so you can see you can have a variety of options for fibers to give you the desired um characteristic that your end application might need and then you have to bond your fibers with a, an adhesive it can be say a binder you probably might need flexibility in your application say you are uh, wanting an unwoven for your furniture where you want them to be soft and flexible you want your chairs to be soft cushiony everybody likes that so so you want your non woven to be flexible so you want the binder that can deliver that flexibility to your um furniture or say you are designing an non woven for a uh, interior wall you want rigidity in that in that wall you want that strength in that wall you design an non woven with a binder that provides that strength or say you are designing a non woven for a gym school gym you have these kids playing and going bashing against the walls or balls thrown at the wall and you want that rigidity that abrasion resistance in that wall you design a binder to provide that abrasion resistance on the flip side say you are designing something for a hospital you want them to be chemical free so that it's not contributing negatively from any emissions from the the binder you can go for thermal bonding there the thermal bonding gives that the the fibers the bonding that it needs and the strength that the end application might need there or say you feel looking for something soft touch or a high elongation for your application you might go for just a mechanical bonding that can enable you to give that soft touch or that elongation so you can see that a combination of your fiber and the bonding uh type or material can get you to that end application on top you might need something um say a uh, antimicrobial um characteristic or a fire resistance characteristic or a um, hydrophobicity characteristic you can add a tertiary process on top to provide a topical um coating or a topical application of these ingredients to provide the added functionality 
functions. Or you can also bring these functionality with the fibers or the binders in there, depending on your process or the end application that you're shooting for. So you have these combinations of, of various different um, components that can provide you the strength, the acoustic characteristics, the fire characteristics, all those that I talked about in the previous slide that it can bring. So, so you can see here that you can design these non-wovens as um, your end application might need. Because of the strength component of the non-woven, I'm going to talk about another attribute that these non-wovens can bring. That's the use of recycled material. So a lot of times what we see is when we choose a recycled material over a virgin material of the same kind, depending on the source that the recycled material have come from, the strength can be lower. It might be because of various reasons, maybe the molecular weight has gone down because of the processing through the recycling process or the bonding strength uh, between the material is not as strong as in a virgin material. So, so there can be a variety of reasons, but the end um, game is the strength is lower. That's where the non-woven can help and compensate for those lower strength because it inherently has these strength characteristics. It can bring in that strength and allow you to use higher and higher amount of recycled material. And, and we all want to use the higher amount of recycled material in any of the uh, applications or, or material that we are designing for various applications. So, so that's where the non-woven can help. And because it allows the higher use of recycled material, um, it will help reduce the CO2 footprint or energy consumption during our process. So you can see that that's where another aspect of where a non-woven can help. As you're designing a non-woven, one other aspect I want to uh, bring up is um, the choice of raw material. Here, I'm gonna talk about an example of a binder that um, we developed within John's Manville. The binder is completely non-toxic. It uses um, raw material. More than 90% of that is derived from uh, a bio-based source. And the other uh, remaining is biodegradable. So you can see that the material that's used in the binder is completely green, yet once it's put in a non-woven, it delivers the strength that is desired out of the non-woven. So you have the option of choosing these types of raw materials that are extremely environmental friendly and create the non-woven that still delivers all the strength and the durability, all those characteristics that you desire for in the end application and is expected from the non-woven to bring. And because we are using these raw material, it uses 70% less water and energy during the processing of this. Through this binder development, um, Johns Manville won the EPA um, Green Chemistry Challenge Award. Um, and if anybody wants any further information on this, I'll be uh, more than happy to talk to you about this. Feel free to email me or ping me through the chat and, and I can provide additional information. Before I conclude my presentation, I just wanted to briefly talk about who we are at Johns Manville. We are a leading manufacturer of premium quality construction and industrial products that caters to a variety of end applications, not just building interior, but many other different markets that we serve. We have been in this business for 155 years and many, many, many more to go. Um, we have manufacturing facilities in North America, Europe, and China, and cater to a variety of um, applications all over the world. Um, we are wholly owned by Berkshire Hathaway, over $3 billion in sales with more than 8,000 employees. Um, on the right there, I've provided my um, contact information. So feel free to email me if you have any further questions or um, want to know more about Johns Manville or any of our products. I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you very much.